So here it is right out of JF Customs. We are going to try to figure out how to do a project that makes sense to the average person, to you the viewer. Yeah, we do Riddler cars, we do half a million dollar cars. My cousin David has been looking for a C10 for a long time. So David, what like what's the problem with finding a C10? It's very hard to find to start with and the only ones I can find are in long boxes. Right. We've been looking for a C10 and, and I drive one on a regular basis, but it's kind of a hodgepodge of parts. We've been looking for one for a long time for David. We found one locally. The problem is, is it's a C20. It's a camper special. It's got old man mirrors. It's got a whole bunch of problems. And if you want a super cool short box lowered pickup, it isn't the truck. What it is though, is it's rust free. This little truck is what we're gonna teach you guys what you can do for yourself. How much was this truck? Uh, seven grand. Seven grand. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of money to some of you, but realistically, it's a good driving old truck that isn't rusty. So we were willing to spend the money, spend the money, do the thing. And what we're gonna do in three stages is show you how to shorten the pickup frame, shorten the box, which is probably the biggest part of it. You can't find a fleet side box to save your life. In fact, they make new panels, but they're not that good. So you'll really like that part of it. And then after that, we're gonna show you how to turn it from a three quarter ton to a half ton. That part's super interesting to me because I'm a body guy and the mechanical stuff I get lost on. So what do you figure about that? I have a lot to learn <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm really excited to see what, how this turns out. It's a wicked adventure. Is, We're yeah. taking you with us. You're going to love it. I think it's one of the best things we've ever done here because the high end cars are fun. They're interesting but they don't always show that we're really car guys and you're gonna love the fact that we're really car guys. Stay tuned, the old hey. girl's gonna be a <laughs> wicked low rider before we <laughs> so If you ever find yourself stuck in Nashville for any reason, this is worth Subscribe to our buddy's channel. Killer Customs. Killer yeah. Customs. It'll kill you if you don't sign up. <laughs> <laughs>
foot and eight inches. All right, here's the basis of the whole long box to short box premise on a C10. You gotta cut 12 inches out of the front, eight inches out of the rear, and according to our studies, here's the way we wanna do it. And I'll explain to you why. We're gonna cut the 12 inches based right off the edge here of the front of the box. It'll give us a very, very small repair when we do it right. It also won't affect the rest of the box. We wanna keep the stake pocket so we've cut around it or we're gonna cut around it. On the back, you'll notice this really weird line. It would definitely be easier just to cut it straight through at eight inches, but what happens is the taper of the box shrinks as you get to the tail light. What we wanna do is mediate some of that, so we're going to do this angle cut. We've seen it done, it looks really good. When we're done, we're hoping to have non-visible welds. So we're gonna spend a lot of time making sure the fitment is really good, We'll show you how we do that. Another thing that's important to note is we are only doing this truck on weekends and evenings. So David stayed really late last night, got us ready so we could do these cuts today, assemble this box side today. We wanna to make it legitimate. Just like you guys with a real job, we have a real job building hot rods, but this is one of those things we're doing after hours. Stick with us. Cutting utensils. Now that everything's marked the way we want it, what we're gonna do is actually cut the inside of the box first. The reason I wanna do that is I want the outside to come off nice and clean. My thought is that if I cut the inside first, then it won't be sort of dangling and giving me problems. David's gonna be able to hold the sections, so we're gonna go outside cuts to inside cuts so that we don't have anything falling apart real fine. You can see here we got a really, really nice straight cut. And it reminds me, I should probably teach you guys a little something about how to use a cutting blade. Again, I don't recommend this one. Definitely put a guard on it if you're gonna be doing it. We've got some experience, but I'll show you how it works. Super crude here, but here's your blade. Here's its cutting direction. You never ever want to be cutting steel on this side of the blade as it's coming up because what it does is it creates a really sharp line in the metal. Kind of like that if you will. And this point in the metal turns into something that blows the blade apart. When you're cutting this way, you end up cutting the metal like that. And because this line in the metal is actually just sort of cutting away from it and everything's blown off this way, you end up with a blade that doesn't get bound up, and blades that don't get bound up don't break. So safer cutting, more precise cutting is definitely done on the face of the blade, not the back side of the blade. Hopefully that made a little bit sense. <laughs> Here we are. The blade spins this way, right? So what I want you to do, whether it's a small blade or a big blade, I want you to follow along with the blade this way. So don't forget to spin this way. It'll pull itself into the cut. It'll stay nice and straight. If you go backwards from that, it tends to sharpen this part of the blade and the metal at the same time, and the blade blows to pieces. So watch. That spins that way, and this is the direction it pulls itself. And I just follow that way. Coming back on itself. Once you've sharpened the blade and once you've made a hole through there, it's just going to blow the blade to pieces and that's how people get hurt. So hopefully that explanation helps you with what I did on the board. the cutting part of it. It seems like it's gonna be fun to just chop shit to bits, but that's not the way it works. The nicer your cut is at this point, and that's why this part is very, very important. The nicer your measuring is, the nicer your markings are, the nicer your cut is, the nicer job you do in the end. Because if you have some metal that's really close and then some of it that's far apart, 
all you're gonna do is try to fill that with weld. Hot weld on sheet metal tends to make holes. Then you got a big basket case of weld. So take the time to mark it well, take the time to cut it slowly and accurately. There it is. So you look at that line, it's super even. You don't see a bunch of chop marks in it. Take your time cutting the pieces off. Just like that, we weren't filming, but it happened. See this wheel coming apart? See my glove? Where the thing decided to climb up my arm? My, th my thumb's pretty bruised, it does happen. I don't recommend the spinning wheel of death for obvious reasons. I've used them thousands of times, but unless you're well trained and you have a little luck on your side, it might be best to stick with a little three inch disc. All right, here's one of the next steps that's important. Fitment, fitment, fitment. If it doesn't look like it's fitting well, make sure you tidy up your cuts and make sure that it's gonna fit. So I'm gonna show you here. We're kind of struggling at the front. So can have a look here. The other side. That should do it. Still needs a push top and bottom because it's still warped a little bit. What I'm gonna try to do is start it clean in the corner, the upper corner, and then David and I will physically bend the lower part into place as we tack it. Here you can see just how nice our fitment is before we even start tacking to go on to welding. We're gonna put this piece in place for now and get started. So it just dawned on me that we should probably talk a little bit about welding while I'm going through this process. David, of course, being an apprentice, had a lot of questions to ask. You've probably got some similar questions. You say, why does a fancy hot rod shop like us use a MIG welder? Well, a couple reasons for that. For one, we want to show you that at home you can do this 
and you need a lot less skills to be using a MIG welder than you do a TIG welder. The other thing about the MIG is it's a little bit quicker and you can add or subtract how much product you're using to fill the gap. So the gap is the space between your two pieces of metal. Here in this case, David did a really good job of, ma of masking it and making the lines. I did a great job of cutting it. So we have very, very few spaces to fill. What I've done there on the settings on the machine is I've made the heat or the arc or whatever you want to call it. I've made it hotter than usual and I've got less wire coming out. So less wire feed. And what I'm doing, and you can see the welds are absolutely beautiful, right? So we got lots of penetration, lots of heat. We're definitely not cooking too much of the paint on either sides, which is what I'm after in the end. And we'll have very little grinding to do. Now, if you find that your panel fitment isn't quite as good, what I want you to do is turn the heat down and then add a little extra wire. Because what you're trying to do is fill the space. So think about it. You need the wire to fill the space. You don't want a lot of the heat to go with it. Otherwise, you'll be melting holes. So that's about all I can do to tell you through the internet on how to work that but it should help you a little bit. So the welding's done on this panel. As you can see, we didn't boil a lot of the paint. The fitment was great. So now we're gonna grind it off nice and slow. You can still hurt the paint and the panel with overheating with grinding. So you'll notice I'm moving around the panel quite a bit. And now you're gonna see some great results. Again, you'll notice that I've been using a small tool to get some real precision on the grinding. Watch how nice those welds are coming into bare metal there. Because of the cuts and the angles, we got a really nice fitment down this side of the panel. We've got really weird shapes here. And we've got a larger opening here. Remember, we were trying to stay away from those. They do happen. We'll show you how to kind of weld them up and fill them up. What we wanted to do is make sure that this line started out correct and then work our way down because this one's really going to fill us. My favorite tools for panel alignment are, well, this one happens to be an old windshield tool. It's kind of strong, but it's kind of thin too. So all I do is get it underneath the panel and just sort of work both the panels so they're congruent. Once I get a nice flush fit, and you're good for alignment down there. Yep. I'm trying to get it. Good amount of weld on that leading corner and then that way I can really start to pry and pull yeah. on these other two panels you see so if you look right now it's really nicely aligned here it gets way out of shape here and out of shape the other way here so I have a feeling what I might do is just make sure that the panel is lined up here and then I'm gonna work this as a completely separate part because it looks like we're gonna have to put a little saw cut into it and open it up so I know that the panels are aligned right here. Mm -hmm. Down on your side, right there. So I'm gonna take that and run. I'm gonna put a couple little tacks to make sure that you're gonna go down on your side a bit. Down a little more, right there. Now I don't wanna make a lot of commitment because we may have to cut all of these welds off if we can't get this other area to come and join us, join the party. 
So right now, David, I think what you're going to do is you're going to grab that small cutoff wheel. And we're just going to open this up a little bit. So David, you're going to cut just a little saw cut in here. Now I want to teach you guys about that too. If you have two pieces of metal overlap like this, just picture them like this, and we're going to bring the saw cut in. So if you cut this way into those two pieces of metal, they're good, you're going to have a big gap. If you actually take the saw and bring the blade in like this, you're actually going to have very little gap. And that's what we're going to try to do. You see the blade will be at an angle. Just like this. So rather than cut straight up and down like this, I'm actually going to cheat it a little bit and cut at an angle like this so that these two pieces of metal have the best chance of actually butting up to each other. So you can see that this part of the box is now lined up, lined up, lined up, lined up, right down to this corner. I want that to be strong, so I'm just going to put a tack down there. So now I know that from here to here the panels are aligned. And you can see if you look this way, as I was making a small relief cut, these two panels started to align, so I'm another half inch down the weld. Hold that in place. So I'm happy with that. What Dave and I have got to do is figure out how to get these two pieces to go. And when I press on this, you can see that the back end of that goes down. I think we're going to use that to our advantage. So David, if you want to push that down, and I'll see if it helps align it. It does a little bit, but not enough. So I'm just thin one in here. Back up. See that a little bit of work with the hammer. I've got a little bit of uh, pressure on my blade here. I'm not going to go right into this spot where it's perfect. I'm going to go Another quarter inch past where my weld was. And what I want to do is this looks like it's very, very tight. I'm going to do a little bit of a relief cut in there to help it. But look at how nicely that's coming along. So that didn't take a lot of work, but it took a little bit of thinking. We're going to now take advantage of this area being good. I'm going to move down a couple of pieces there on holding it in place. And I don't think that could have gone any better. This is the trickiest part of the job, as far as I can tell, because it's an exterior piece and it's a bunch of different angles coming together. I think we've nailed it. Now we're caught up with aligning the panel. I really want to get a bunch of welding done and make it strong before I attack the next problem. And if you look down here, it's the leftover sheet metal. I've seen it done a bunch of different ways and we're going to try to do it in a way that's really, really pretty. So we'll get some welding done and come back right back to that. So here's one of the obvious problems that comes along with shortening the long box. At the very end here, you have a whole bunch of extra metal. I'm going to teach you how to do that without a lot of special tools. One of your special tools is going to be a vice grip. If you have a look here, I've already welded right down to where I couldn't anymore. And the reason I did that is to hold everything in place. It's going to make metal shaping this little section way, way easier. So I'm going to start by vice gripping this together a little bit. And now we've got some shape there. This is just a home built piece of pipe. Again, crude tools. I'm going to put it back there, right along this edge here. What I'm going to try to do is fold the metal down. I'm actually going to stroke it down like this and uh, we'll see how that works. Okay, 
there. So we're pretty close. You can see that just pushing this metal down over this round edge has sort of created a new line. And what I was trying to do is just sort of hold it up like this, pressing against the metal, holding the weight of the metal a little bit, and then hitting it down like that. So another couple shots to show you how that works. I don't want to make the correction in the last four inches so you can see me kind of stretching it out over the 10 inches there just to get it real nice. I can tell just by how small the spacing is now that it will pull itself together real nice which it does. We're going to do a little bit of welding here trim the bottom edge off. Let's show you how that works. So if you've got the steel bed floor instead of the wood bed floor, what we did is cut 12 inches out of the front, put it back together, and we cut seven and a half inches off the rear and actually cut little 45s in the bumps and just hammered and dollied at 90 degrees and it worked out really nice. We didn't even have to weld it. Dog Doug. Doug approves. <laughs> Doug says, yes, good job, boys. And we got all sorts of stuff to show you guys this season. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. We've got some stunts and some how-to fab stuff. Click subscribe. You know how to do it on YouTube. Join along, hit the like button, all that stuff. <laughs>